Hello guys, my name is Pavel Kropla from BlenderFreak.com and welcome to the part number 54 of the Node Editor tutorial series. Today we are going to have a look at these changes here and also briefly on GitLab. Especially when you are not familiar with GitLab, I will give you a quick overview where to find the files, where to find the commits, the differences and also how to report the issues and feature requests. I hope you are excited and, and let's get started. Let's start easy. So the last time we created socket.changeSockets type method to allow us to change in the runtime the type of the socket. Most of the cases we are just going to repaint, for example, the color of the socket. And by default, we can have some type of the socket. Once we do evaluate the node, we can, for example, change the type of the socket, therefore change its color. So now with this change in the node socket, we edit this line self change socket type according to the data we provide to the deserialize function. That means if we load up the file or we do redo for example, we can change the socket type automatically from the data we were passing in. Moving next, I change the string we are outputting when we do print edge node and socket to the console most of the time. So in the socket, as you can see, there is also being printed out the index of the socket. So moving next, we got edge. That's basically almost the same thing. I just cleaned it up a little bit. So it's a little bit simpler. We are printing out the starting socket and the end socket. And here in the node, we got a new function also with the changed string. So the string right now is showing the starting socket and end socket and this is the new function we can reuse. So this is basically calculating the socket position in the scene coordinates. So by calling this one, we can get the position in the scene. So for example, if we start dragging edge, you don't need to connect it actually to the socket directly. We can just put it on the position where the socket is. And this is a helper function which can help out help out to calculate this position. So moving next, I wanted to figure out why actually sometimes the application is crashing, especially when we are dragging edge. So here are some changes in the node graphic view. So first of all, I changed the edge drag start threshold to be 50 instead of 10 pixels. And moving next, here is a new debug middle mouse button scene items, which by default is false. So now, here is first change. Previously, we were using middle mouse button press. And if we got the debug on, that meant that if you clicked on graphic edge or graphic socket, we were printing out the information about it. Also, if you clicked on the empty space, we just print out all of the nodes and edges in the scene. This is basically remaining the same. However, right now you do have to have debug middle mouse button scene items to set to be true. And special case, if you do click on empty space, you print out all of the content of the scene. And also if you do hold the control key down, we are also printing out all the graphical items presented in our graphical scene. So this should help a little bit with the debugging. And moving next, the left mouse button release. Here everything remained the same except that everything is in try except block. That means if somewhere in the code here, if we do create some kind of exception in our code here, that means we are now going to catch it and print it into the console instead of just unhandled exception, which could cause the crash of the application. And if you got troubles with debugging your code, let's just try to put everything into try except and print up the exception which could happen there. Otherwise, the PyQt application is gonna crash. Here are some notes. And, and here in the mouse move event, since I found out that sometimes uh, the crash was happening when we were moving with the mouse and changing some positions of the edge, here is another test, edit. So before we were just checking if the drag edge is not none, now we are also checking if the graphical edge inside of the edge is not none. 
and the same goes to the cut line as shown here and here is a bug fix so before when we were calling edge drag end so we ended up our dragging edge we did call the remove all edges on the item socket or on the drag start socket now we are actually detecting if the socket is input and if it is we are removing the edge silently that means that we are not going to trigger any on input change event if one of them is input socket i was also trying to fiddle around a little bit with the socket snapping and highlighting so here is the change for the highlight in the graphic socket there is a new boolean flag is highlighted and here in the init assets you got a color for the highlighted pen and also the pen itself so now you just need to call gr socket and set is highlighted to be true and it will paint out as a highlighted socket then i updated the change socket type function here in the node socket since this function is working perfectly fine however if you do want to respond somehow to the change of the socket type you would need to do the same exactly the same check as it's done here already so instead of writing or checking out what was it before and if it's gonna change now and then calling change socket type again and doing the check again we are now returning true if we call the change socket type so we can just call from the code change socket type store it as a result and then do some other stuff according to the information if we actually changed the socket type or if it was the same as before and next fiddling again with the colors so this time we do want to change the color of the graphical edge so here we got the new function change color which we can call and set the color of the edge also for the convenience method we got set color from socket so this way we are going to ask for the socket type and if it's the same type we are going to get the color of the socket and change the color of this edge according to the socket here is also stored a default color which we can recall later in the code if we want so i believe these are all the changes and there's the next one there is just an empty commit increasing the setup the number of version of the whole package to be 09.1 and this one is also tagged if you look in the gitlab now in the releases you should be able to see also the version 091 which contains all of the changes below so if you go over to gitlab to the pyqt node editor repository as you can see here here underneath the project overview in the releases right now there is a new tag 091 which contains the source code link to be downloadable also as a zip dar gzip or other options also the same applies for the next versions and at last let's talk about the change i wanted to squeeze in and there's a smarter deserialization which now works also with the selections so first of all there is a new callback in the nodes node it's called on deserialized and this method is going to be called whenever you deserialize the scene that means when you load up the file or you do redo operation so if you do want to hook up some specific code for your nodes when you do redo you can do that by overriding this on the serialized method in your node moving next to the scene that is just print and here is some code so when we are going to look later or others will look at the code they will somehow better understand what it is actually doing so it's 
here on the on item selected and here at the end the deserialize method got replaced so before what we were doing is that we just cleared all of our scene and then we went through all of the nodes and all of the edges and we just created them from scratch which for basic implementation is good enough and this is perfectly valid especially when you are loading a file however if you do redo you can easily imagine that this doesn't make too much sense since we already do have the nodes most of the time and most of them in our scene we are just changing some parts of them so therefore this code got replaced first of all we are not clearing the scene anymore and then we will create a new copy of all the nodes in our current scene. Then we are going through all of the node data we want to deserialize and we are trying to find the node. If we don't find the node, we are just going to create a new node, we are going to deserialize the data and we are going to call the callback. So on deserialized. However, if we do find the node in the scene, we are just going to deserialize its state then we are going to call the callback at the end if we did found the node we are just going to remove that from our list of all nodes because at the end of this for loop here in the all nodes we will have nodes remaining in the scene which are not in the data we want to deserialize and therefore we should remove them from the scene and that's exactly the thing we are doing here. And the same applies for the edges. We are just creating the list of all edges. We are using copy here. Since we do want to have a new copy of this data stored in the scene. Since we are going to remove a bunch of stuff from it. We are going again through all of the edges. We are trying to find the edge. If there is not found edge, we are going to create a new one. However, if we do find one, we just deserialize the data on it and we are going to remove it from our list. And at the end, we will clean up all the remaining edges from our list. And therefore, this is going to work much faster than the previous version. And here in the node scene history, let's have a look. Here we got the new debug selection, which is for debugging the selection as you would guess and the new undo selection has changed which can be reused later i will get to that in a moment so what actually changed so instead of just writing history stamp selection object like this since i do want it to reuse it at where i just move it to a new function called capture current selection and this one is creating a list or a, let's say a dictionary with nodes and edges containing a list of IDs of all the selected nodes and all the selected edges. This one is being passed into the create history stamp. By splitting these into two functions, you can override this functionality a little bit more convenient way. And here in the restore history stamp, this got updated and here again, as you can see, I put everything into the try except block. And here are some of the changes. So first of all, I'm going to set the flag undo selection has changed to be false. So by default, this is going to be false and nothing happens. Here, I'm going to ask what's the current selection in the scene before I restore the history stamp. Then I'm going to deserialize the scene. I'm going to clear out every selected object or se every selected edge in the scene. And then I will reuse the code from before and I will restore the selections of the edges. The same will apply then for the node. As you can see here, first of all, clearing all selected nodes. And then we are set selecting all of the nodes again and now after the deserialization we are going to capture again the current selection and we can compare if the current selection of the nodes 
is different than the previous one or that happens for the edges so here is the code then we are going to set the undo selection has changed to be true so why is that variable here somehow in the code I was using I wanted to figure out if I do redo operation I did change the selection since I do wanna provide other UI depending on the selected items and this way once I overridden the redo I can now ask the scene history directly if undo selection has changed is true and if it is I can properly react to the selected items in the scene after I did redo operation. And as a last commit here, I just increased the version again so anybody can see that as a new release in the GitLab. And speaking of GitLab, let's have a look at it again. Since I tagged the last commit as version 0.9.2, and filled out some notes here in the change log. You can see it here underneath the project overview releases as a new version and you can also download the code here. If you do want to develop it further just use the clone here. If I was going through the changes too quickly the link underneath the video will lead again to the repository commits as you can see here. So here are all the changes I was discussing. Here is listed the change in the code. So for example, if I click on the support socket highlight, as you can see, these green lines were added and the red ones were removed here. And this way you can go through each of the changes I've made. Also, I would like to ask you if you do find some bug, let's go ahead here to the issues and create a new issue as for example other Cantor already did here so undo causes crash if you create a new issue please try to provide some kind of description how to reproduce the crash or the bug and sometimes also the information about the operation system and python version and pyqt package version is helpful and here we can easily track the bug and other people can see that and we can hopefully together figure out why is it crashing. Also, if you do want to see some kind of a feature which you are missing in the node editor, go ahead and create a new issue and just label it feature and then write the name of the feature. So we can somehow in the list know that these are some kind of problems and if it starts with feature, then we will know that it actually is a feature request you want. GitLab is really an awesome place where to collaborate with multiple people who write code and if you don't know it I would suggest you to let's have a look at it because that's a thing which can save you a lot of time. So that would be all from me I hope you like the changes I've made so far and thank you for watching.